Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Rain. This is the fourth video in the seed physiology section and today's video we are going to discuss about physiology of germination. We know that a seed contains an embryonic plant in an inactive state. And all the viable seeds which have overcome dormancy either naturally or artificially will readily germinate under suitable environmental conditions. And such seeds uh, which just wait for suitable environmental condition to germinate are said to be quiescent. That is the seed contains an embryonic plant in a resting condition and germination is just its resumption of growth. Or we can define germination uh, as the beginning or the process of development of a seed or simply the emergence of a new plant from a seed. But in physiology, the term germination is defined as the process that begins with the water uptake by the dry seeds and ends with the emergence of its embryonic axis, usually the radical. And also, this germination does not include seedling growth. And the seedling growth, it comes under seedling establishment only. Uh, we already said that if a seed uh, break its dormancy either naturally or artificially and with, which waits for the uh, favorable environmental conditions and that seed is said to be quiescent, quiescent seed. And what's the difference between a quiescent seed and a dormant seed? Quiescence is a state of suspended growth of the embryo or a resting condition of the seed. It involves the factors in the seed itself which put it into a resting state such as desiccation. And a quiescent embryos will resume growth at any time upon exposure to favorable conditions. The favorable conditions needed for germination include water, oxygen, temperature and in some cases light also. While dormancy is the state that requires a special event or trigger before the embryo can resume uh, growth and such, which include, that triggers include fire, uh, scarification, stratification, etc. Until such an event occurs, the seed is prevented from germinating. This is the case of a dormant seed. Next, we can see the physiological condition of a cuisin seed. That is a seed which is waiting for favorable condition to germinate. Before germination, the seeds, uh, the a seed is a dry structure and all the metabolic activity is minimum. The dry structures include the seed coat, endosperm, and which will prevent the outward growth of embryo. And in some cases, the seed coat is impermeable to oxygen. And also, in order to germinate, the seed coat should be permeable to water and oxygen. And also, it should be penetrable. The cells, other than the cotyledons, are highly metastomatic. But still, they do not divide and have low respiration rate. And what are the reasons? That is, we are analyzing the physiological condition of the quiescent seed. Uh, that is, in absence of a sufficient amount of water, these cells are unable to maintain the turgor so that their growth is checked. The second reason is, these cells do not have sufficient amount of soluble respir respirable food. And the food stored, reserved food stored in cotyledons or endosperm is in insoluble form and it is not available to the uh, cells, that is the metastomatic cells. Then aerobic respiration in embryo cell is at its minimum. This is because the seed coat acts as a barrier to oxygen. And seed coat may contain inhibitors which check growth of these cells. And also the concentration of the hydrolytic enzymes is low in dry seeds. All these above conditions are admirably overcome if seeds are placed under suitable conditions essential for germination and in most cases seed germination begins just by placing the dry seeds on a moist substrate. Why most of the seeds germinate when placed under a moist substrate? 
here comes the physiology of germination as the first step in germination is the imbibition that is the water uptake by the seed and this water uptake by the seed is a triphasic one that is the imbibition or the water uptake is divided into three phases phase one phase two and phase three in phase one the dry seeds takes up water rapidly and in phase two the water uptake declines and the metabolic processes including transcription and translation are reinitiated and the radical emerges out and by phase one and phase two the actual germination is completed but the water uptake didn't stop in phase three the water uptake resumes as the seedling established this is the post germination phase phase three is post germination phase where the water is utilized for the seedling establishment In phase 1, that is imbibition, imbibition is a physical process related to the metric forces that occurs in dry seeds with water permeable seed coats. Whether they are alive or dormant or non-dormant, initially the water uptake is very rapid over the first 10 to 30 minutes and this is followed by a slower wetting stage that is linear for up to an hour for small seeds or several hours for large seeds. The phase one imbibition is divided into two stages that is the rapid uh, imbibing stage first stage and the second stage that is the slow wetting stage and after that uh, the water uptake eventually ends as the seed enters the lag phase of germination next phase is the lag phase of germination although the lag phase is characterized by a period of reduced or no uptake of water following the imbibition it's a very uh, highly active period of physiologi physiological uh, metabolisms and then the phase 2 is a period of high metabolic activity that prepares the seeds for germination and now we are going to see the critical cellular activities needed for the normal germination first one is the mitochondria maturation followed by protein synthesis uh, storage reserve metabolism then production of sp some specific enzymes and the final one is the radical protrusion mitochondrial maturation mitochondria are present in dry seeds and this must be rehydrated and the membranes within the mitochondria must become enzymatically active within the hours of imbibition mitochondria appears more normal and then both respiration and atp synthesis increases substantially the mitochondria are present in dry seeds also but it is metabolically inactive stage when once it is rehydrated the enzymes in the mitochondrial membrane will get activated and it will start producing atps and uh, engaging respiration also next one is the protein synthesis although the mrna is present within the dry seed protein synthesis does not occur until uh, the cell get rehydrated and polysomes are formed new proteins are formed within hours of imbibition and new protein synthesis during the lag period is required for germination also next one is the storage reserve metabolism that is the metabolism of the storage reserves that this is a enzymatic breakdown of storage macromolecules to produce produce substrates for energy production and amino acids for new protein synthesis and this reserve metabolism also produces osmotically active solutes like sucrose that can lead to change in the water potential of the cells and the embryo in preparation of this radical protrusion and next critical cellular activity is the production of specific enzymes including those responsible for cell wall loosening in the embryo or tissues surrounding the embryo and the final step is the final step or the important uh, activity is the radical protrusion the first visible evidence of germination is the protrusion of the radical and this is initially the result of cell enlargement rather than the cell division however soon after the radical elongation begins the cell division can be uh, detected at the radical tip 
Radical protrusion is controlled by the opposing forces between the growth potential in the embryo and the physical resistance present in the seed cords. The radical uh, protrusion occurs when the water potential of the cells in the radical becomes more negative due to the metabolism of storage reserves. And second one, when the cell walls in the hypogotel and radical become more flexible to allow the cell expansion. And then the cells in the seed tissue surrounding the radical weaken and it allows cell expansion in the radical. And this combination of all these factors may be involved to control germination depending upon the species and tissues covering the radical. The radical comes out and grows downward and then the plumule comes out and grows upward. Um, up to radical emergence only, it comes under the phase of germination and rest all this uh, rest all the processes comes under the seedling establishment only in our next video we will cover the seedling establishment and morphology of a seedling establishment and then that's all about germination physiology of germination and thank you for listening my video and if you like this video give us a thumbs up please subscribe our channel share this video and leave your valuable comments for improvement in next videos